What about you? Check out my thoughts on this lovely number. The Tarcomel 10 year old single malt cherry cask finish. What's up whiskey lovers? Greetings and thanks for joining me for another episode of Whiskey Straight where this time I'm coming back to the homeland I'm going to be reviewing an Irish whiskey and it's a 10 year old single malt as you've seen from the introduction from the name it's the Turcomo 10 year old sherry cask finish now when you think about an Irish whiskey it is a wee bit off the radar, it's a wee bit off the map and haven't tried a few lately I really do wonder why I've had the, the single malt non-age statement, really enjoyed it very reasonable price, low 30 quid mark I saw this what, a few weeks ago it's a 10 year old age stated obviously 46% Sherry cask finish, you know I'm a sucker for a sherry cask finish and it was just over 40 quid and I thought you know I'm going to have to get that to see what it's like and I have to say I'm not disappointed but I'll not give the game away too much right now. So Turconnell, you'll see on the label there there's horses on it and, and this is integral to the whole history of the whiskey to a horse race which was the National Produce Stakes and there was a horse called the Turconnell which was basically probably in today's standards not into horse racing probably considered pretty much of a donkey you know you're not going to bet on it but this horse won and one of the people watching the race was a local distiller, a guy by the name of A.A. A. Watt and he thought this was such an occasion that he would make a one-off whiskey to commemorate this great event. It was supposed to be a one-off but here we are and it's still going. Today, well, what you've got in here is it's Cooley whiskey, but it is looked after basically by the Gilbegan distillery and that is under the overall umbrella of the Beam Suntory um, our network. So if you've got a pour of this, you've got a pour of any Irish whiskey, pour yourself a wee dram, join with me in the experience and let's have a good whiskey tasting time together. So let's get right on into it and start off with the nose and slauncher. Now right off, it's very distinct. It's very apparent that this is a sherry cask finish. Straight up, it's rich, it's smooth. And I would even go as far as saying it's almost decadent in a way. It's that nice. There's raisins, there's red grape and there's a nice mix of dark fruits, raisins and a, and a wee bit of berry fruit that makes it feel a wee bit like a really deep rich smooth kind of a balance between a slushy and a smoothie. And there's a wee bit of cherry in there as well. In fact, the cherry note comes through and it really is very, very appealing. There's some fresh wood as well. Some pear, like a mashed pear. And when you really get into it, there is a touch of pineapple. Pineapple with a wee hint of brown sugar across it. It's a really beautiful rich decadent nose it really is balanced but the thing that comes across is while it's not very deeply sherried as in some of the other whiskies you'll get that are full of raisins sultanas really dark deep dried fruits 
this one is sherry driven but the fruits are a wee bit brighter it's more in the mid-term sherry cask but the way it just comes across the way it's done it really really is a beautiful nose cheers again it's quite a sherry hit up front on the part a wee bit more so on the nose those fruits are a wee bit darker they're a wee bit deeper You've got the raisins and the sultanas, but at the same time, there's a wee bit more of the red fruits going on there. A wee bit of cherry. A wee bit of red berry. Even some raspberry. But what immediately is abundantly clear, the mouthfeel in this is really, really bloody good. It's, it's smooth, it's buttery, it's creamy. And again, that word decadent comes into play. And it's not a thing you really get on a whole big pile of whiskies, but this really is a decadent whiskey. On the second sip, the sultanas, the raisins, the darker shade comes in a wee bit more, but there's still that freshness of a lighter berry note. And it really is. I got pulled up on this by Neil from Husky Trials when we last review. I said rich too much, but this is rich. It's balanced. It's a luxurious, decadent mouthfeel as it crosses the palate. There's a wee bit of green apple comes into play and a bit of freshly squeezed apple juice. And then some mashed pear again with a wee bit of brown stroke demerara sugar god this is very rich and luxurious it really is so we'll go again before we sum up oak milk chocolate virgin a wee bit on the dark chocolate some coffee note espresso rich there we go again with that note but full bodied full of flavor espresso this is a coffee note that you're not going to get with your instant stuff this is this is a high-end sort of coffee note that comes in on the back of that and that chocolate note too it's not just your bog standard stuff it's something you're going to get at a chocolate here this is just such a lovely whiskey and I can't really stop going back to that description of decadence, luxury, creamy mouthfeel. This whiskey really does punch above its age level, punch above its, uh, its weight, the, the nose, the palate, Everything about it just, for me anyway, oozes class, luxury, decadence. It's just does it for me. It hits the spot. And I can't really highly recommend it enough. This really is, for a 10 year old Irish whiskey, this really is damn near the complete package. I know that the do a port finish and a Madeira finish cask and I really want to try them and again the prices are pretty good like you can get this for what 42-43 quid which is pretty bloody good in the overall scheme of things because Irish whisky does seem to be a wee bit five ten pound more expensive than the scotch and I know some will argue the scotch is better, but you really got to try this. It's bloody wonderful stuff. Now, the finish in this, it does go on quite a while. And what I like about it is it maintains its luxuriousness. It maintains that rich, decadent note. 
the raisins and the sultanas in there are a wee bit of chocolate, bit of the coffee, but to temper that, there is a really, really nice red fruit influence, a wee bit of cherry, and it keeps it from becoming a wee bit too bitter. It's not in any way spicy, and it just keeps on going. And it's one of those, how can I put it? I can, it's just one of those whiskies you can take, you can sip, and you just sit back and go, you know what? This is how whiskey should be. You can sit back, take a sip of this, and enjoy it for 10 minutes, just the one sip. And to me, that is the mark of a bloody good whiskey. So with that all said, I'm gonna score this a good, a very good in fact, 92 points. All you guys, thanks again. Look after yourselves, keep each other safe, and as I always say, make sure you enjoy your whiskey the way you like it. Slancha, until the next time.